Hey guys, what's up? It's Crumb, and welcome to part 2 of things only old RuneScape players will remember. There was a lot of great feedback on my first video of this topic, so here I am, coming out with part 2 at your guys' request. I have a lot of really cool things to see if you guys can remember, and if I missed anything, as always, leave it in the comment section below. So, without further ado, let's get right into the video. I'm actually really curious about how many people experienced this first thing when it was actually around in RuneScape. So back in the RuneScape Classic era between like 2001 and 2004, only one person could talk to an NPC at a time. If somebody else was talking to the NPC and you wanted to talk to them, too bad you had to wait your turn. And this went for every single NPC. Bankers, the ones that run the different quests, shops, so you can kind of imagine the annoyance, especially if you're trying to do a bank standing skill and somebody keeps taking your NPC that you're trying to bank with. This caused massive lineups on quest release days because everybody wanted to talk to the guy that gave the quest, but only one person could talk to him at a time. The most famous example of this is on the release of Dragon Slayer. There was a massive line of players waiting their turn to get the quest. You know, this is one of those quality of life improvements that I'm very glad got implemented quickly with the release of RuneScape 2. I never played back when this was really a thing, but I have played the classic version of RuneScape and quite frankly it's an annoying feature. But the nostalgia is kind of cool to go back and actually experience that. If any of you guys actually experienced this firsthand, let me know in the comments below. So this next one isn't super old. But I think it's how a lot of people had originally found out about RuneScape. Do any of you guys remember, I'm sure there's a lot, the days where you would go to Miniclip and there RuneScape would be, you would click it and it would take you to play RuneScape. I know when I first started RuneScape I was introduced to it from a friend, but my friend actually found out about it through Miniclip. And I always hear in other people's YouTube videos that they found out about RuneScape via Miniclip. And I think that's really cool because there's so many of us that came from that platform and here we are still playing RuneScape 10, 11 years later. While we never play any of those other old mini clip games way back in the day, like uh, Puzzle Pirates, if any of you guys remember that. And all those old crazy racing and shooting games, maybe Line Runner if you guys remember that one. Good times back in the day playing those games. I have a lot of fond memories. This next one is for people that played RuneScape way back in the classic era. So way back then, you could actually duel people anywhere as you want it in the world. You would simply right click them, send them a duel request, much like a trade request, and then you could fight them right there, you could stake items, and you could see who was the better player. When you died, however, you would be sent back to Lumbridge, and actually that was used as a means of teleports. You would kind of find somebody and say, hey, will you duel me and kill me so I can go to Lumbridge, and people will do it. And that's a mechanic that doesn't exist, at least in old school RuneScape anymore, but as of 2016, it was re-released into RuneScape 3. Except it no longer teleports you to Lumberts when you die, because frankly that was a little annoying and people kind of abused it as a teleport. Nevertheless, it's a pretty cool piece of RuneScape history, and it's a feature we don't see in old school RuneScape anymore. If you want to fight somebody, you either got to go into a PvP zone, or you need to head all the way down to the duel arena to be able to do it. You can't just duke it out in the middle of the GE when you're mad at somebody. You know, actually, as unreasonable of an idea it is, this could actually be a way to solve a lot of fights in RuneScape. Imagine someone just came and crashed your Slayer spot. Screw you guys, send me a duel request and let's see who wins, and who wins can have the spot. Nowadays on RuneScape, if you're a male character and you want to wear like a female plate skirt, like go right ahead, you can slap that on, wear it around all day, and no one's going to have a problem with it. And vice versa, if you're a female character you want to wear plate lags, not a problem, you can do that. But back in the early days of Classic, you actually couldn't do this. There was specific armor types for male and female characters. And if you had the wrong armor type, then you would actually have to go to an NPC in Varrock, and then he would change it for you for free. But it was really a bit of a pain in the ass, right? Because if you went and bought some female character's plate top, then you couldn't actually wear it. You had to go all the way to Varrock to get this damn thing switched to the male version so you could wear it. You know, I think this is actually a really interesting mechanic because they implemented these different armor types for genders. There was literally two different types of the same armor that they had made in RuneScape Classic. So there was the male version and female version of Rune, Adamant, Mithril, etc. And this is something that we've never seen again in RuneScape, at least that I'm aware of. Maybe in RuneScape 3 things get a little weird over there. Uh, but definitely a cool, interesting thing that happened way back in the day in RuneScape and that I'm sure gave some of you guys trouble back then. This next one was a sign that somebody was a cheater. 
and it still persists into RuneScape till this day. So it's possible to see a character on RuneScape 3 that's a female that actually has an authentic beard from like a male account. And how people would do this is they would use a packet editing program. At the time they liked to use one called WPE Pro, which was like Windsocket Packet Editor or something, I forget what it was. But essentially you would go to the Makeover Mage and then you would change the outgoing packets the data that was being sent to the RuneScape servers to give you a male beard on a female character. And if the person never changed their appearance after that, and then they transferred their account to RS2, they'll still actually have that female account with a beard till this day. And you never really see any of these around anymore because they're so rare. But if you're really looking to see one, the best place is to scour around on the RuneScape forums because there's still, you know, there's still people on there that have the old RuneScape forum profile pictures that you can take just next to the Makeover Mage of their account as a female with the beard. And it's a really cool thing to see. I remember the first time I actually ran into this occurrence, it was on the forums. So that's definitely like a cool little glitch that people used to be able to do way back in the day. And there's really not a lot of people that actually have an account with this on it because A, they either changed their appearance and B, you had to have a technical understanding of networking way back in like 2001 and 2004 when a lot of people didn't know much about computers. You know, the funny thing is, is it's actually still possible to do this hack on the version of RuneScape Classic that exists today. So if you log back into your account now and you wanted to edit that outgoing packet, you could actually have your account on RuneScape Classic have that beard as a female character. Not as cool, because anybody can do it, but definitely really cool if you have an account that's on RuneScape 3 nowadays that's a female with a beard. How many of you guys actually went to a library and used to play RuneScape or played it on school computers? I never personally went to a library to play RuneScape because I had a computer at home, and that's how I actually eventually got into RuneScape. I was introduced after I had that. But I do remember all throughout my high school years, every day in tech class, and I was also in this distance ed thing, which when I was on the computers for like three hours a day, I would sit there and I would play RuneScape on my level three scaler and do whatever, typically something AFK so I could switch back and forth when the teacher came walking around. But I remember having an absolute blast doing that pretty much every day in high school. And nowadays I'm in college and I just have a laptop in front of me doing computer science, so let's expect it. And actually this year I got my melees maxed out, uh, attack strength and defense, because I did Nightmare Zone for pretty much the whole first semester. Uh, I'm really curious though, how many of you guys actually kind of started playing RuneScape on a library PC? And I imagine that would have been almost horrible. You would have to wait for the computer. They might have eventually blocked the game, a whole bunch of bad things. But definitely a really cool history. You know, I think that's the pinnacle when you're like that young and you're going to the library to play a game. Like that just shows how much fun you must have been having in the game at that time. And sometimes I really wish that we could go back to that nostalgia. But at least the game's here so we can kind of still relive it. Just not like it was. It doesn't have the same magic magic when we were that young, but the magic is still there and I think that's why we're still all playing. This one is, you know, for the slightly newer crowd, not for the super old crowd, but who here remembers when Old School RuneScape first came out, of course there was no Grand Exchange that wasn't implemented till later. So everybody was at Verrock and you'd be typing out what you want to sell, what you want to buy because there's no autotype feature in game. Unless you were bad and you were using an autotyper, I'll raise my hand at that, I'll admit I was one of them. But then this site, Zybez, which is like a RuneScape help site, came out with that little trading Grand Exchange thing they had and that was the hot spot, that's where you would go to find your trades and you would add the people in game and you would PM them. You know, I thought that was the coolest shit, even though it was like, you know, it's all technology doing that, right? Over a web page and whatnot. But I really, I thought that was really cool. And I kind of missed those days a little bit because there was really a sense of community, at least when you went to buy and sell things, because you would interact with the person that had them. Or if you were selling it, you need to interact with the buyer. Whereas nowadays, you just kind of go to the Grand Exchange and buy it. Sure, it's convenient, but it takes that community aspect out of it. But then again, at the same time, it kind of omits scamming a lot and all those good things too. And of course the Grand Exchange really brought a lot of players back to old school RuneScape just because of the convenience factor. It was really a horrible experience when you're trying to buy like all the items for say Legends Quest. Uh, but to the same accord, if you even want to go further back in RuneScape history, and at that time everybody did their trading in Falador Park. And you had your different sections for like party hats and armor, the best gear was barrels and a whip, and if you had that you were like awesome. So just a lot of memories back before the Grand Exchange. And honestly, I think that's why I'm such a good typist today. You know, when I first started playing and I was selling things, I'd have to manually type these things out. I didn't know about auto typers. I didn't know how to be bad and use those. So, you know, I'm really quick now. I type it like, um, well, I'm not that quick. I type it like 90 words per minute. 
uh, but I attribute that to RuneScape. Anyways guys, that is all we have time for in this video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing, and if I missed anything, please leave a comment below letting me know. You know, I'm having a lot of fun making these videos, I definitely have so many more ideas, I could do more if you guys want them. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, love, peace, and chicken grease.